Good day, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another Little Fuel Show. So this fine, uh, chilly evening as I'm recording this here in November 2021 from the new house, the new studio. Uh, it, I woke up this morning. It was frosty. The car said 31 degrees. And literally the whole landscape outside my new house was white, not with snow, just that much frost. So uh, winter's coming. And as a skier, I'm very excited. So, but ladies and gentlemen, I'm not here to talk about skiing. I'm not here to talk about frost. I'm here to bring you another new healthy influencer. I'm actually excited because we were just geeking out before I hit record tonight. And she's actually talked to a back in the day, most downloaded episode, I think probably still to this day, gentleman that I have name dropped many times on this show's history. Uh, shout out to Dr. Jack Cruz with a K. He aired back on February 20th, 2017 on episode 51. One of the first ever episodes where I recorded video. And we obviously, we are recording video tonight. We stream this live uh, in the Facebook world immediately. And then when this airs in the podcast world later, you'll have this also available on YouTube as well. So ladies and gentlemen, let's geek out here because we're about to get to know a fun young woman who might know a little bit about quantum health. She geeked out so much about it uh, beyond me that she decided to launch a TV channel about it too. So uh, again, back to video and the importance of education, but Again, quantum health, ladies and gentlemen, as in circadian rhythm, we've talked about this before, uh, quantum biology, we might geek out about something along those lines. I mean, I actually have a great bio about her, uh, but uh, some big things that popped out to me right away that she apparently loves to talk about, and I'm a geek about, is things like blue light. Okay, I've got four different pairs of blue light blocking glasses, thanks to all the manufacturers I've had on this show as well. Uh, I can geek out about butter versus margarine. Oh yeah, I'm going there, people. And then whether or not to wear sunscreen or not, don't get me going on that. And there's a whole lot more about this. But ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, Meredith Oak, welcome to the Live the Fuel Show. Thank you very much, Scott. It is a pleasure to be here. Well, I love the fact that as we hit record, and I like it when these, these agencies who send me people like you have a great, beautiful bio. And I, again, obviously, you've spent time as an ICF accredited executive coach, and you have a lot of information about you. But right when I saw keywords quantum health, it was easy to approve you. My team sent that over to me and I'm like, yeah, just go ahead and say yes. <laughs> I don't even need to see the rest <laughs> of the stuff because one, it's very rare to get people to reach out who even want to talk about that subject, let alone put those two words together. So, so we can keep the audience excited about this show and not because everybody's got a short attention span these days. Why those two words mean so much to you? Let's go right in on that. And then we can expand on it so they understand what you and I are probably going to be leading down a road on. So why quantum health? Quantum health is the new paradigm of how we need to look at human biology and, and how to be healthy. The way that we have been trained our whole lives to think of how our bodies work uh, is wrong is the wrong word. It's incomplete. Hmm. And uh, once you can wrap your mind around the shift that we are actually uh, quantum beings, that quantum mechanics can occur in dark, wet, in warm, wet places, like within human biology, which to this day, most physicists will tell you is not true. They will tell you that quantum processes only happen in outer space and at the subatomic level in certain kinds of conditions. And there was a book that came out um, the coming age of quantum biology, a couple of academic guys, a quantum a biologist, and a quantum physics physicist decided to do something crazy, which was talk to each other and see if each of their disciplines could solve the other's problems, um, could answer questions that weren't being answered. And they did, and they could. And so then other brilliant people took their conclusions and started to apply, make practical applications to human health. Okay. I like it. So why did you get drawn to it then? Because obviously, and a quick background on you, you've been around the block a little bit. Uh, you're a newer uh, state of New York resident that I just learned about, but you've also uh, traveled around the world. You've lived in other countries. Um, thanks to COVID, it, it clearly triggered you guys to move again. And, and then obviously become a geek about circadian life so much that you started Quantum Health TV. Uh, so actually real quick on that, because I love the screen share, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Quantum Health TV. There's the site that actually translates over to circadianlife.tv as well. Uh, yeah. So there's a whole site here, video resourcing people. So we'll talk more about that. But so, so what, 
threw you so head first into it <laughs> because I started geeking out about it probably over five years ago, only because of people that I heard on other podcasts. And then I stumbled across some audio books. Then I stumbled across people like Jack Cruz when he was still approachable and able to get them on a show. That guy is that's such a hot item. And then I started falling down the rabbit hole and I never wore blue blocking glasses until then. I never knew that I should probably turn off my Wi-Fi at night, you know, thanks, thanks to Dr. Cruz. Uh, all these other things affecting our cellular health at the cellular level. Um, and then learning about circadian rhythm and eh, yada, yada, yada. So for you, what, what flipped the trigger? What, what was like, you know, I'm all in, let's do this. <laughs> so for me, I mean, the short answer is I don't like cooking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we got to expand on that. So Okay. Okay. All right. Let's, let's go down that rabbit hole. So I, and quantum you know, health. I had, I was having some health challenges, um, which I, I came to understand was chronic fatigue. One of my children was having some health challenges <clears throat> and all of the feedback that we were getting was change your food, change your food, take this out, put that in, you know, and I just, I love eating. I love, I'm a food appreciator, but I'm not like, I'm not so much in the kitchen. I have, you know, the way my mind works. I don't like details. I don't like recipes. <laughs> you like to fly and by the so, seat of your pants. Yeah, I yeah. do. I like big picture, right? I like to look at the big picture and like, see how things should work. So for me, the idea of having to micromanage my food to the level that I felt like I had to, because every time, you know, you're not getting better, the feedback that you kind of get is like, okay, well, you're not, you're obviously eating something wrong. Um, and it, it just got to the point where I was like, I was, I was, I had ordered a spiralizer, you know, those things where you put I, the, I, I was on our wedding list <laughs> okay. and I haven't used it since. <laughs> well, there you go. So I'm, I'm like reading all these blogs of like how to have a ketogenic family. And I'm like, I mean, keto, keto's great, you know, whatever, but I have three children. It was like, it just seemed so, and I, I was reading this thing and it was like, just get a spiralizer. And then you put the zucchini in the spiralizer and it's just like spaghetti and your kids will love it. And I like got this thing out of the box and I was staring at it on my kitchen counter. And I was like, they will not love it. They will not love it. They don't want zucchini shaped like spaghetti. They want spaghetti. And I just kind of had this moment where I, I just sat down and I was like, there has to be something else, right? Like it can't just be food is important, but there has to be some other piece that I'm missing. Um, Cause it just didn't feel like, it didn't feel like I had a complete picture. Um, so I got really quiet and I just sat there and I watch a lot of videos and I listen to a lot of podcasts. And Wait, are, are you, are you hinting at YouTube university? That's what <laughs> yes. Yeah. Everybody has to watch everything on YouTube and yes. nowadays, but there is a wealth of information out there. If you could sort through it all. Yes. So. You have to, you have, you have to definitely have a high level of discernment and trust your own judgment and be able to sort, sort through the nonsense. Um, and I had a few trusted interviewers that I really liked, that I liked that were pretty woo woo, but I, I just, I sat there and I just, I was like, okay, Meredith, like there must be a clue somewhere in all of the, all of the research you've done over the years, there must be a clue. And I flashed to an interview I had seen with Dr. Jack Cruz. And I had, and I remembered listening to it and I'm like, oh, that was interesting. Like about the light and you know, it's good to be outside or whatever. Um, but when I was up against the wall and I couldn't get better and I couldn't get my child better and I just couldn't see a, a way forward and no one had any answers, you know, I'd try, I'd done all the supplements, I'd done all the acupuncture, sure. I'd done all the things. Um, I went back and watched it again from that place, from the place of being up against a wall. And I was like, oh, yeah. oh my God. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> I love where you're going with this because I mean, again, ladies and gentlemen, you got to really think about this. I, I've, I've said it before and she couldn't have said any better. Like she had just a few minutes ago, she mentioned woo woo, right? Now you're mentioning once you're at a different place, go back and reconsume some content and see how you reflect on it differently. I was the same way about the law of attraction, right? Reading all those books and the secrets and all that stuff. You know, I thought that was the most woo woo crap I've ever, I'm like, whatever. And then again, 
if you look into the behind the scenes, yeah, a lot of the the book of the secret and they turned it into a movie. It does come across very woo woo, but they've got physicists involved in that content as well. And it's like, there's a lot of power behind these bodies and the power plants within our cells, the mitochondria and this energy and everything else. So whether you want to look at it as woo woo or not, fine. That's that initial threshold. Then we have to take personal accountability for our potential future and say, okay, well, I've acquired some more knowledge. I've met some more influencers. Now let's go back, reconsume some content and see if it's, if we're getting anything different out of it. So what was one of the biggest things that popped out to you when you went back and you're just like, Oh, it was like a ha- aha moment type of thing or. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And you, yeah. And I, I'm, I'm right with you, Scott. Like that is exactly like, sometimes like you hear something and you're kind of like, yeah, okay, whatever. And then you hear it again when you need it. And it's like, whoa. And for me, it was the idea that our bodies are being programmed by our environment. Mm -hmm. And the absolute, you know, most all encompassing aspect of that is the light that we're under. So if it's not totally dark when you're sleeping, your body knows, like our, our, our bodies, even if you're covering your eyes, your body can tell that the light is there because oh, yeah. every single cell in our body is being programmed by that light. And if you're messing with that, it's like, like, it's like, oh, I'm, I'm working on my sleep routine. So I've done all these things. And then like drinking a Red Bull before you go to bed, right? Like yeah, not a good idea. That's what I would. <laughs> and I was, st- like, my iPad. <laughs> I was like, you know, and yeah. So it, the idea that, that my health was being programmed by my environment, mm-hmm. like the, and the, and that our mitochondria are programmed by the frequencies of light that they're exposed to. And that if we mess that up, we break them. Like we break our mitochondria and yeah. they, and they power everything, as you just said. Yeah. Which again, translate to the listeners who are newer listeners. Mitochondria is Basically, consider it the power plant within your cell. So we're talking deeper than just at the cellular level, people. So like millions of cells in your body, millions of power plants. Imagine shutting them all down. You're dead. Yeah. Right? I mean, at at the most severe level, at the most severe level. You're like throwing a grenade into all of the, all of the, the foundation of the function of your body just by having toxic light. And again, there's lots of other triggers, right? There's, you go beyond light. Now you, you, can, you can go down other rabbit holes. You have a uh, fungal influence, right? So uh, mold influence. Uh, yep. There's all these other variables that depending on the influencer you stumble across in the podcasting world or YouTube world, yes, some people's symptoms might be tied to a, a mold exposure. Some things are tied to dietary. Like you said, you hated the kitchen, but it's like, yes, there are nutritional t- triggers. But if there was one thing that I learned from getting into this, like you are, it's like, Holy crap. Well, there's one thing that affects you all the time. It's light. Yeah. doesn't matter what diet you should, or what should, I hate the word diet. Right, let, me, let me pause on that. All right. We're throwing that's a bad four letter word. <laughs> Diet's a short term mindset. People is your lifestyle, right? So like adding what we're talking about right now into your healthy lifestyle goals is very, very key. So whether you're experiencing or studying a ketogenic lifestyle or a carnivore lifestyle, yada, 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 or my client, uh, I was telling you, Vinny, NSNG guy, no sugar, no greens. A lot that's that was before keto became a thing. Basically, the same foundation, but yeah. that's all nutrition. So yeah. it doesn't matter what you're doing nutritionally. We're talking about cellular health influenced by light. Yes. Yeah. So what's the sun <laughs> give off? I tell our newer listeners, Meredith, since you've been studying this for so long, what light frequencies do we get from the sun? So I like to I like to talk in metaphors and yeah. Um, that's, why, that's why I knew you'd have fun yeah. with this. So, yeah. so, you're, so you said you're an English major. So. I'm an English major and, you know, I have to work really, really hard to wrap my head around the science. And then I forget it five minutes later. So I just remember like the key concepts, right? Yep. But it's like you were talking about the mold. Okay. So if somebody was eating really well and exercising and like doing all the things, but then their bedroom was infested with toxic mold it wouldn't be surprising that they weren't getting better. Right. And yet that's what we do. If we don't address our light, we're basically, you know, it's, it's not mold, it's light, but it's like, if we're, we could be eating well, we could be doing all the things, but then if the sun goes down and we turn on the LEDs and we 
go on our laptop with no blue blockers. Mm -hmm. And we do that until 11 o'clock at night. And then we wonder like why we can't lose that last bit of weight or get our energy back or right. Like we're, we're breaking it. So this you, time, you've, you've programmed uh, your eyes and your cells to say, Oh, blue light. Well, that's daytime. Yes. So you're telling your brain and all the functionality that happens from behind the eye. Um, say, Hey, it's daytime. I'm going to stay hopped up and ready to go. Yes. So good luck trying exactly. to go to sleep. <laughs> exactly. And or then, you can go to then, sleep. Yeah. But then you can't stay asleep. But then you can't stay asleep. Or even if you do stay asleep, the the repair mechanisms that are meant to be working while you're sleeping are not working because you didn't produce the chemicals and the hormones necessary for that to happen because we try because those are all set by light. And where do those happen? Right behind the eye, right? So back to that point of you're allowing your cell to be exposed by blue light, all these negative frequencies that is passing through the eye. And a lot of people don't realize I've learned that over the years that what happens from behind the eye is actually the production of that. Okay. What am I thinking about? Actually, I'm brain farting right now. Wow. And I just put myself on point. The, the, the trigger to help you go to sleep. People melatonin. take supplements. For melatonin. Thank you. Your melatonin yeah. production. Thank you. Yes. And then obviously, because I, I also take a magnesium supplement that my client makes, but mm -hmm. it's like, okay, I can take all the supplements I want in the world. But again, back to your point, I'm still allowing these other triggers to break down that process. So great. I've taken the supplements and maybe yeah, I'm a health and fitness nut. So, I mean, I'm in pretty good shape, but again, if I'm still not addressing that light, I'm breaking all these natural processes that could be benefiting, but I, I assume oh, I'm healthy. I'm fit. I work out and I take supplements. So I'm fine. Yeah. And you can look amazing, but that, that's inside. where you start to hear people um, getting really bad injuries out of nowhere or, you know, having sleep issues or all these things, even though they're meant to be very fit. Cause when the, the best way to start <clears throat> is to go outside at sunrise. So the, the light spectrum changes throughout the day, back to your earlier question about what's happening. Mm -hmm. So the, the light <clears throat> spectrum that's happening at sunrise is literally like, uh, like a barcode and your mitochondria are literally scanning that barcode to, so to know what to do. And the morning and the sunrise is when you make the melatonin. And then when you go to bed at night and it's completely dark, the lack of light tells, tells your body to release the melatonin. Tap into it. And then all of the, all of the beautiful things happen when you're, when you're sleeping, the autophagy, which is like literally your cells repairing themselves. Um, and so you can, if you have an intact circadian rhythm, your sleep is refreshing. It does what we remember sleep doing when we were kids, right? <laughs> oh, listen, I, I live this way. My wife does not. I love her. Um, she's a very intelligent woman. She went to Cornell University, went to UPenn University. She's a doctor of equine uh, medical for animals, large animals. She's a doctor of chiropractic for animals. Smart cookie iPad and TV. I bought her blue blocking glasses. Doesn't wear them. <laughs> I, I'm sitting right next to her with my blue blocking glasses, no iPhone, no iPad. I watch a movie with her. And then again, we're, I've been doing it for years. She just, you can't, it's like, it's just like with diet and coaching. I tell you like, you can't force people unless they're ready for it. And she's five years younger than me. So maybe, yeah. maybe yeah. she justifies it that way. And I was like, Hey, I was like, I was like she, she just got injured by a horse, you know, uh, this week. So I was like, she might have torn her ACL. I was like, I'm not saying you're, you could be bulletproof from this, but our bodies from the inside out, we need to find ways to bulletproof. Them. Like I, I, I collapsed a lung two years ago, <clears throat> working out. I was in a hospital eight, eight days, gave me robotic lung surgery, all that. I was, I did not touch one piece of that hospital food. I made sure my wife brought my blue blocking glasses over so I can get proper sleep. I wouldn't take any of their farm pharma, crazy pharmaceutical pain drugs. Like I was, once, once that done, boom, take me off the chest tube. I was out. I was recovered back working out within a few weeks. And people were like, you're being, you're being wow. crazy. I was like, no, I'm not. It's because I laid one hell of a foundation and I didn't break my protocols the whole time in the hospital. I had my wife bringing me um, my grass-fed beef. I sold, sourced from a local farm. I had my blue blockers. I had her bring in my bone broth. I was, I was drinking bone broth. I was like, the nurse is looking at me like I'm crazy. And I'm like, yeah, this is what I do. <laughs> and I don't, I don't eat your nasty jello or whatever your hospital's giving me. 
when it gets night, when I'm, I'm waking up in the morning as early as I could in a hospital bed. And then I'm going to bed at night. I'm putting my blue blockers on. Like I'm following my, I, it's, it's part of my lifestyle. Ever since, like I said, yeah. like I said, ever since uh, meeting Jack in 2017, and then actually, uh, you ever meet uh, Kevin Cottrell? No. Oh, he's one of his early mitochondriacs. That's how I got connected to Jack. So Kevin was actually episode 44. Jack was way back in episode 51. Uh, okay. But Kevin came on because he was a broken Silicon Valley executive, like physically broken down, all kinds of problems. Mm. And he used to be a big outspoken person in the, in the paleo world before keto started taking off. Okay. So he, was, he was a big paleo, uh, beating cancer, uh, sleep, all that stuff. Yeah. So technically, Kevin's the first one who got me going. And then he introduced me to Jack and just blew the, blew the doors wide open. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I got I to reach out to him. I wonder what Kevin's up to these days. Uh, but anyway, that was one of my early uh, influencers uh, from that world. So, but he was one of uh, Dr. Jack Cruz's early mitochondriacs. As oh, Jack, Jack cool. Tom. I'll have so, to look him up. I'll yeah. Cottrell, C-O-T-T-R-E-L-L. So, okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, he was like overweight, unhealthy. And, yeah. And, He's a big supporter of In the Sun. Like he's all tan all the time now, you know, yeah. as, as we seem amazing. to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, no. all right. So, so how did you, so obviously, to, how long have you been an adopter of this education? now? So the spiralizer moment was in 2018. Okay. And um, I started to get serious. And <clears throat> at that time we were living in France. And so I re- I downloaded the DMinder app because you know one of the things I was learning was the importance of being in the sun for making vitamin D. So, you know, I knew you couldn't make vitamin D in the winter in a lot of places, but I'd never thought much about it beyond that. Um, gave my kids a supplement because the pediatrician told me to, and that was kind of it. So I downloaded the DMinder app, which tells you it's, it's a very cool app. It tells you where the sun is in the sky and it geolocates you and tells you how much vitamin D you can make on that day, depending where you are. So yeah, even I'm not using that app. All right. I, I stand, I stand open to new influence. Hello. <laughs> yeah, it geolocates you too. Come on. Yeah. So you turn it on, it figures out where you are and then it figures out what the sun is doing in that part of the world. And then it tells you, and then it tracks the IUs of vitamin D that you're making. You tell it what you're wearing. And then it tracks. So is this it here? Yeah, that's it. The DMinder Pro? Yep. Ooh. And I believe to do those basic things, it's free. I don't, I may have bought it. I don't remember. Um, uh, I usually, but, I, I always try the free version and then I end up just getting it if I like it. So yeah. Well, they have it under the right category, health and fitness. So that's good. Yeah. Yeah. It's a cool app, but here, <laughs> here's the thing. So I downloaded that app in uh, early November um, in Paris, France. And the, it figured out where I was. And then it kind of goes, your next vitamin D window is in 144 days. <laughs> I was like, what? what? Okay. <laughs> We're going to Mexico. <laughs> Interesting. So that was just one of those, you know, one of those things where like, yeah, you know, you know, I come like, yeah, I know I'm not probably getting vitamin D in the winter here, but I didn't really think about what that meant. Um, So we booked a trip to Mexico uh, over the holidays in December. And that was the first time we got up Well, we were there. We got up every morning and looked at the sunrise. Um, We spent as much time as possible outside. We did not use sunscreen. I told the kids, if you feel like you're getting burned, go in the shade. But that's what we're supposed to do. Yeah. Like people, it works. I, I'm an anti-sunscreen <laughs> person too. Like, you're going to get skin cancer. I'm like, eh, don't get me going. But I was no. like, just think about this. It's like the human body is a very intelligent machine. So it's, if you start feeling like you're getting hot and warm, that's your body talking to you. So it's like, maybe double check your skin. Maybe you cover back up. Yeah. You're not supposed to be able to sit in the sun all day long. That's not necessarily normal. Most human beings, you know, a long time ago would never do that. <laughs> They'd run back into the jungle or go back to their cave or whatever it may be. And it's like, yeah, that's okay. Your body's talking to you. 
but you feel it's okay to slack yourself with chemicals just so you can stay out there longer. And you think you're helping your vitamin D production, but you blocked your son, your, your body's ability. And then I, yeah. I like, I like this because people don't know that when you're sweating, you're, you're sweating out vitamin D, right? So it's like, okay. So then you think, oh, okay, I'm going to go, I'm going to run off the, run off the, the, the beach and use a little portable shower there and then wipe it all off. So it's like, okay. So, cause you're sweating. I'm like, no, just let your body absorb that back in for a little bit. Maybe not rush that shower right away. There's all kinds of things I've learned over the years. Am, am I wrong on this? I mean, what are your thoughts? Yeah, no, yeah. that's yeah. You're, you're at the forefront, right? It's like, we take, we take this poison and use it to block out the life-giving. But we're, what we think that we're getting. It's like, yeah. it's like, Oh no, I, I got to go out and get my vitamin D. Oh, let me shellac my, my chemical yeah. side. And you're like, you literally thought you were helping yourself. And then you literally counteracted your help, your own self-help. <laughs> yeah. And it's gotten insane. Like I, I go outside early in the morning. Right. And so you're out, you know, you're out like, like seven o'clock in the morning and you walk by someone and you can smell the sunscreen. And I'm like, why would you think you're going to get sunburned at seven o'clock in the morning? Plus even I know uh, from the years <laughs> spent as a wild and firefighter, um, uh, the peak burn rate of the day is actually between two and 4 p.m. So that was what you used out West. Cause I traveled all over the West. That's part of the book. Yeah. It's like, you said your, uh, you said your brother was a firefighter, right? Um, yeah. I went in, uh, um, Squamish, British Columbia. There you go. Oh yeah. BC love BC. So, uh, great times up there. I, I got married up that way. So, uh, oh, wow. well, maybe not be well, long. No way. We, we did a heli skiing wedding in Banff, but then went over to BC to do the actually heli thing. And then we did some backcountry snow cat skiing. I don't know. We were all over the place up there. The Canadian Rockies are majestically beautiful. So they're gorgeous. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Banff is one of the most beautiful places in the world. I got to go back when it's not white because apparently it's, 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 yeah. it's beautiful in the winter, but apparently it's even more beautiful in the summer from everything I looked at. So, but again, get out and enjoy the sun, you know, yeah. you know, maybe heck even in the winter, especially if you're at altitude, because that's your better chance of getting proper sun exposures at higher altitudes yeah. in the off seasons, like get out there on that sunny day. And take a ski jacket off tied around your waist and go skiing short sleeve. People think yeah. I'm crazy. People think I'm crazy. Absolutely. I was like, you know what? And I'll embrace the chill. I'm all right with it. Yeah. No, and then you're getting a little, yeah, no, it's good. And even even the health benefits of benefits of the sun are present all year round. So vitamin D is crucial, but it's not the only thing. So I've been, you know, been doing a lot of talks lately on preparing for high latitude winter. Right. And the message I keep getting from these quantum practitioners is just like, be outside as much as you can, no matter what, because the, your, the sun is conditioning your body in all kinds of ways, even beyond the vitamin D project production in terms of setting your circadian biology and all of, all that kind of stuff. So it's, like, yeah. So let's, let's, let's break that down. Cause it's been a while since I've had somebody on the show and we've geeked out about circadian rhythm. And again, one thing I like about you already is that you, you right off the, the get go said, listen, I'm an English major. I, I, I can't, it's, and I think that happened to me early on with the woo woo response, right? If we can reduce some of the people listening to this show's initial woo woo response, let's make that our goal today. Right. So, okay. okay we're not talking woo woo people. This is actual science. It's not fake. It's actually been tested, clinical trials, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. You know, trying to become a physicist is not an easy educational path. These people aren't messing around. So because you're an English major and you translate it, what is the most simplistic way outside of the sleep cycle, which we already discussed, how to help people understand the basics of circadian rhythm so circadian rhythm tells your body what to do to function optimally. Okay. So the more out of sync your circadian rhythm is, the less ability your body has to function optimally. It just cannot do it. It's like, it's like an orchestra playing out of tune, right? If your circadian rhythm is working the way it's supposed to, which is being programmed by the natural, by natural light, um, your cells, if you could hear them would sound like the New, York, the New York Philharmonic, right? right? Like it would just, it would be beautiful. There's a continuous resonation. Yes. Is, is that a word? Resonation? I think so. Uh, res 
<laughs> residents. Well, residents, right? We'll go with just residents. Yeah. Like there's going to be such a clean. Uh, so I, I actually, I've had a lot of people on this show be geeked out about stuff like this, right? So when I was in high school, instead of following the college prep route, I went to a vocational school and I studied microelectronics technology. Nice. Good. I, used to be able to, I used to be able to rebuild circuit boards. And, oh, that's uh, great. But the cool thing is there was a machine. This is in the 90s. But yeah. I think they still use it to this day. It's called an oscilloscope. And you would hit, take these little electric leads and you'd hook them up to a circuit and there'd be a, a, a sign and a, a sign weight. And if you're, if you're resonating two different circuits, you would, your goal is to try to align these sine waves and get them to follow each other in sync. So I'm just trying to apply a, a visualization to what you're discussing uh, as we talk about this. So but yeah, so I, 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 I'm a bit techie when I want to be. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, it's that beautiful resonance, that yeah. continuous pattern, right? It's like, here, for the listeners out there, it's like, when you find a podcast that you think somebody told you that you should go listen to, and I've had this happen many times, and I go listen to this podcast, and you could tell that they're using like a cheapo pair of like Apple iPhone headset or whatever. They haven't like, just go hide in your closet, you know, for sound quality, like you're in your kid's room. Like, I love it, right? It's like, hey, guys, like, just take a couple of steps to care about good, clean audio. Like, that's all. It doesn't have to be perfect. I got a dog. He's dying of cancer. He's beaten it once. We cut his leg off for him. If he howls in the background now, I don't care. It's my house. It's my lifestyle. But like, I'm, I'm going to make sure I have a decent microphone, do some, do, some, you know, do some things to make a podcast sound smooth and nice and professional. Well, I kind of think about that when it comes to circadian rhythm. Like you, you, you're doing all these things to make your body heal, or you think you're making your body heal, or making your brain rest and heal. But everything is so out of whack and so out of tune, and you can't understand why it's not working. It's like because you're not doing these necessary little extra steps to love yourself, so your so your body can heal and your brain can heal and recover. And, uh, what are what are your thoughts on where I'm going with all that? I love it. It's beautiful, Scott, and that that's exactly it, right? Like it goes back to what we were saying before about you can take really good care of yourself, but then if you go to bed in you know pile of asbestos, everything you've done that day is not going to save you. Right. So it's, if like not taking care of our light is like, I would say as toxic as sleeping in a pile of asbestos, like it's the same thing. I like that. It's pretty extreme. I, I, I'm, <laughs> yes. just, I'm just trying to imagine it because like, well, it's funny because like our old house, <laughs> our old house is selling right now was built, my wife's great grandfather built it back in 1910. Wow. So, you know, when they slowly updated that house over the year, they had to take asbestos out of there. And actually, when she bought it from the family, there was asbestos in the house and she had to pay, you know, professional removals. Yeah. And else because why? Because asbestos is deadly. It is a known yeah. documented cancer trigger. Yes. You don't want to live in a house with asbestos. Yes, exactly. <laughs> right. Like we know this. And if you were sleeping in a room and you knew the walls were filled with asbestos, it would you know, you'd be like, oh, I really got to deal with that. It's not a good thing. Not a good idea. Oh, right? it's just like mold, right? Like, okay, you yes. start finding mold. What to hopefully intelligent people do next? I'm going to call a mold remediation company to come out and inspect that room, the house and the walls, and then do things to ensure that the mold is dead and or removed. And then, then spend further money and time to try find what is the source, usually moisture, some type of water damage, and then make sure we fix that too. So it's hilarious how we're fixing our homes uh, because the building codes says so, or yada, yada, yada. And then coming back to us, we're still doing nothing <laughs> to fix ourselves from the inside yeah. out. So we're removing all these exterior negative triggers. But some of the basic things like light, we've taken for granted. And it's a shame. And it's not really our fault. It's just that there's the mainstream media, the mainstream medical world has no freaking clue about it. Yeah. It's, not, it's not in the textbooks. It's not, it's not mainstream exactly. enough. I, I like that. I have, I have to go with that word. It's not mainstream. Yeah. Yeah. It's still yeah. woo woo. <laughs> yeah. It's, and you know what, Scott, like, and this is why my husband and I decided to do this project is because we started asking these doctors who had figured it out. Right. Like, so there's Dr. Cruz who did just, I mean, his body of work, crush it, crush it, like stunning. Um, and there are now 
a, a, you know, a small number of other practitioners who've studied it and other MDs who've studied it. Um, and I, I started to ask them like, you know, and they all have, they all have, you know, I have interviewed so many of them and they all have a few things in common, right? For one, they're open-minded. Um, number two, they really care about their patients and they're like, what I learned in school is not helping. Number three, they're all independent. They own their own businesses. They don't work for a big hospital or university or something like that. But I said to them, how, like, when is this going to be part of what doctors are taught? And they, they laugh. They're like, oh. they're like, I don't know if this will ever get taught. And if it does, at least 15 years. Okay. The biggest joke that Vinny and I talk about on his show or my show or in our marketing or in the, the, doc, the, the fat of documentary movies he came out with is... Every doctor I've interviewed, every scientist, he's done. He's got. A, he's approaching two thousand shows online. He's, wow. been doing this, he's been doing this a long time. He's like nine years of podcasting. I mean, he's he's he uh, he guest stars on Adam Carolla's podcast, the famous comedian. That guy has the Guinness record of podcasting. <laughs> anyway, but his the biggest frustration he talks about right along the same wavelength that you're hitting on is he loves to ask medical professionals how much education when they were getting a degree was focused on nutrition. <laughs> now, do you know the answer to that question? I I think they get a couple. You can, you can speak to Canada. I can only speak to USA. I can't speak to Canada. So I'm just wondering, do you know? Not much. What would be a guess? Um, the doctors I've spoken to have said in, for nutrition, they're like, yeah, I think we spent like maybe an hour. There you go. Their entire. Top three responses. One hour, one day, one week, max. But the one week, I've only heard one time. Yeah, and that they couldn't clarify that it was it wasn't a week solid of content. It was just over a week. They yeah. trickled through some nutritional content. And again, back full circle to earlier in the show, it's not just about nutrition, but you also have to think about it this way. Just like light feeds the power plant in your cells, the mitochondria, you do have to feed the body good, clean nutrition that it was meant and designed to process and use, not over manufactured garbage with inflammatory seed oils and all this you know, man-made junk. Like it's just awful. But again, back to our point, light, right? So yeah. uh, here, here's some, you know, actually you, you've, so how many interviews have you done now for your, your site, your quantum health TV? Oh gosh, I don't know, probably 30. Nice. And when did you kick it off? Um, last winter, winter 2020. So February, 2020, I believe. Yeah, I'm gonna do some more screen sharing again because I love, that's a fun of video. Yeah. Um, so is this in your catalog? Yeah. Yep. So I, I load up your catalog. So there you go, you got, so again, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, I'm screen sharing right now. If you want to watch this on YouTube when it airs, if you're listening to this in the radio podcast, well, but they've got modules broken up. You got circadian certification modules. You got uh, the basics, right? Quantum Health Explained. You got yeah. pro tips here. So I like how you guys build up from the basics and get into some more advanced stuff. So this is good. Yeah. Yeah. Have you had a uh, Maruk on here yet? Uh, we are in the no, process. Do you know of, I do. I, we're in the process of setting it up. Okay. Yeah, he's been on the show too. Yeah. yeah. He's yeah. He's fantastic. I met so, him. He, Cause he's one of Jack's uh, protégés as well. So. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I met him on the beach when on that trip to Mexico, I mentioned earlier. Okay. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he's, he's wonderful. He's done a lot to move this to move this information. He was forward. back on episode 242 in 2018. So like I said, I've had, a, a, yeah. I've had numerous influencers okay. on the show. <laughs> Actually, to honor him. You know what? I just popped off screen, ladies and gentlemen, because I have so many different pairs of blue blockers. I don't have his in front of me. His are in my, uh, tra my travel bag. That's why. When I go to hotels, yeah. I travel right. with his because again, he was very educational on the proper red lens, which you're wearing. Yeah. The ones I'm wearing are from Swanick. Uh, you know, it's the Swanny guy. He's been on the show too. I mean, again, good technology, but if you really want the rock solid block, you got to go with that deep red uh, that you yeah. have there. So actually here, I'm, I'm going to change up styles here only because this is fun. There we go. <laughs> oh, oh, nice. Av aviator style. I don't know so. that I've seen aviators like that. It's a Swanny. It's not, it's not Matt's, but you know, Okay. Hey, you're going to send them to me. I'm going to rock them. So I've given away probably four are. or five pairs of glasses because as soon as I teach somebody, I'm like, listen, these were hooked up to me. 
I'd rather pass it on, try them out, have fun. Uh, I even had an eye doctor on, oh God, years ago, he came up with his own that he self-launched on Amazon. They're not the red, but again, anything is helping here, right? We're, we're stepping people in the right direction uh, because his were benefiting an eye health charity that he had founded. Uh, but he had like different colored plastic frames. And oh, his was the first ones I found that had a nice 50% block for daytime use. Uh, yeah. Because that's a big deal too. And again, yeah. you, so let's talk about that real quick because everything is so high tech nowadays. Good segue. Why consider a 50% blocker or a daytime blocker? Because uh, you do want to be getting some blue light during the day. Okay. So the reason the darker the lens is, the more blue light is being blocked. Mm-hmm. So there is no blue light in nature after sunset. There is blue light present in nature uh, during the day, especially around high noon. Mm-hmm. However, the natural light that you get from the sun, while it contains some of the blue spectrum, you never get just the blue on its own. It's always balanced out with some orange and some yellow and some red. I mean, it's oh, yeah. the sun, right? Like it's not blue. Um, so high noon, when you when it's like that really bright, intense light, that's when you have the most blue light present and the least red. And then sunrise and sunset, obviously, it flips around and the blue almost disappears. So if you wear nighttime blue blockers during the day, you're still messing up your circadian rhythm yep. because you're you're telling it there's no blue light which will trick your body. It'll, it'll make you sleepy. Yep. You know, I, I, I gave a pair to a buddy of mine because he's an IT professional. So he works on, you know, his company's networks. So he's always in front of a computer and monitoring their computer networks and all this stuff. And I told him like, listen, you got to start rocking these at night because his sleep health was in the crapper. Yeah. And, uh, but then he's like, oh man, he said, these glasses suck. And I was like, what do you mean they suck? And he said, he's like, I'm like, I'm tired every day at work. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. You got a pause here. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? I said, those glasses were for nighttime use. He's like, yeah, but they were working so great at night. I figured I should probably use them during the day. He says, I was like, whoa, no. I was like, yeah. see, see, we just made a big mistake and I'll take some accountability on this. Nighttime only. Yes. Because he was getting tired and it was jacking him up during the day. So he was falling back and drinking his whatever diet Dr. Peppers and Mountain Dews or whatever <laughs> unhealthy garbage he was putting into his body, which that's, that's, that's a long-term project I have with him. Uh, we've known each other since we were 16 years of age. So it's a longer cycle of education that I have to break, break down for. Yeah. And the people who know us best are ne- yeah. never want to hear no. it. And, but but if, you, if you love somebody and you care about them, meet them where they're at. Don't force anything. Let them come back to you. And sure enough, like it was like, I, I never even... When he, he, when he finally, like two years later, asked me about the glasses, I was like, say no more. I'm sending them down your way. I was like, try it. That's all I'm going to say. I didn't force anything. I waited for him to come back to me. But again, big correction. I thought it was pretty clear it was nighttime. He didn't understand that. So this is a great tip because yeah, people hearing this, there is going to be a small percentage. Like, you know, I've been hearing about that. I'm going to go order some blue blocker glasses. And then they're going to be like, oh man, I'm going to start wearing them all the time. And then they're going to make these same mistakes. So yes, do not wear your normal nighttime glasses during the day. Um, And again, even during the day, I don't wear them. I have a pair of 50 percenters, um, but I don't wear them. I'm not always in front of my TV. Like I, I run hourly cycles on my phone. I'll, I'll, I'll hammer hard for 45 minutes to an hour. And then I make myself step away. You know, I'll go outside, especially if I'm working from home. Go outside, go hang with the dog, go get some sunlight, you know, then come back in. If I'm doing some big project work, but I can't stand in front of my computer for three, four hours. I, I mean, by the way, I have a permanently standing desk. You, there's no chairs in my office. You can't sit in here. Nice. <laughs> uh, I've been this way for about four or five years. People are like, how do you stand? It's like, it's a little rough in the beginning, and then your body reprograms itself and you're fine. Yeah. The human human body is an amazing machine. So, um, so anyway, so, so do, you have, do you have daytime options or no? Yeah, so there a lot of the companies now make daytime. Um, there's a company called Viva Ray, which actually I think this is really genius. They the lenses pop out, so you can have the same glasses. Ooh, interchangeables. And you can do interchangeable lenses as the light changes. <laughs> that's exciting. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a, so I think I'm, that's really should not have told me this. I'm gonna go research them now. I yes. gotta geek out. Yeah. No, we um yeah, I've been in touch with the founder of Viva Rays, and he's uh, he's a super nerd. If you want to nerd out deep with someone, 
yep. on the science of <laughs> blue blockers. And I think he's working on a light now. Um, well, the lights, the lights are big. Um, and, and again, we're, you're still good on time, right? We're still cranking in our normal time slot. You're all right for a bit. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm good. So what are your thoughts on the opposite or our healing properties of the red light spectrum? Do you get out about that at all? Yes. So, so the, so red light decreases inflammation, which is uh, the root cause of almost all chronic illness, right? So red light therapy um, from a, a photo biomodulation device um, can be extremely helpful. Hold on. You got to pause on that. <laughs> you, you, just, you just dropped the sciencey word. Come on, English major photo bio, blah, blah, blah. Okay. okay. It, it's, okay. it's an, it's a light emitting device that specifically releases the red light spectrum, but it yes. pulses, pulses it in a certain way. Right. There you go. Yeah, okay. exactly. So there's different, like, if you just want to, um, cause those devices are like a few hundred dollars to, to get a, to get a oh, good, trust me, I've been, it doesn't flicker too much. Right. So I, if, I need one yeah. for the office and I'm like, <laughs> We, we just bought the new house. We haven't sold the old house yet. So it's like, all right, I got these goals. Like actually I've been looking at a new, uh, have you seen, sorry, I have to segue here. Have you, have you seen the hay? I think it's called the halo dry sauna. So it's a, it's a, it's a salt infusing into the air, red light integrated, like nice. dry, dry swan. I'm like, I need that for my home gym. Like, that sounds really good. Because there's a spa like near me that has it. So Oh, it's amazing. I was like, what? What's that? I was just looking at one called sauna space. Yeah. The infrared. Yeah. But it's got the infrared and it has like, it's it's something, it just, it it releases microlized salt into the air. Apparently there's a lot of health attributes to that. I'm like, oh yeah. Cause I have, I have a, I have a 30 foot by 35 foot new metal pole barn on this new property. So I took the entire bay one of the big garage and turned it into my, my CrossFit gym. So it's like, Oh, I need some therapy next. I was like, I got to get a dry sauna. So I'm, I'm researching all that because if I can't get infrared in the house here, or yeah. red light, I was like, why not just do the dry sauna and like just have a whole HQ for that. You know, I get the salt, get the light, get some sweat on. Like, yeah, so, totally. And you'll, you'll stay optimized all winter doing that, even though. Yeah. Well, it- we're, we're big skiers. So we love the winter. Yeah. So we are outside a lot in the winter, right. but we're still not getting that intensity that summer gets yeah. you. So, yeah. Yeah. So I yeah. learned that from Jack too. That's why he moved to Louisiana years ago was because you're closer to the equator, which he basically said living in Louisiana was like living at high altitude in Colorado. He's like, as far as that proximity to the sun, getting more of an increased dosing, all that stuff. Like you said, you went to Mexico, like you purposely were living yeah. in areas to increase your quantity of access. So. Yes. Yeah. And it's, it's very healing. So that's why we were, yeah, we lived farther South for a year and it really helped. And now we're back up North and we're having to optimize everything. Yeah. Well, yeah, you're upstate New York. Welcome. Like I'm right here in Allentown, Pennsylvania. So I'm probably about, I mean, I'm only about with with traffic an hour and a half from New York city. So, um, oh yeah. So it's basically neighbors. (laughs) Yeah. It's, it's, it's not hard for you. I I go up in your region all the time, actually. So, uh, but so now, now, do you have the red light panels? Are you looking, have you already have any of those? Cause they are expensive. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. a big step. And to so consider. the, the point that I want to make is if you just want to optimize your circadian biology, you, you actually don't need one of these high level devices. You just need some red light bulbs and you okay. just want to make sure that they don't have a high flicker. Yeah. Like these even new LED, LED bulbs. Yeah. Like even if they're led, if they're red, you're still going to be, you're still going to be okay. So if you, you I'm know, all houses guy. now have these like spotlight LEDs in the ceiling. So yeah. our house does. We just don't turn them on at night. We have lamps with either incandescent or red light bulbs in them. Oh yeah. As soon as I bought this house, it had all those stupid spiral fluorescent light bulbs in it. <laughs> Is they're energy efficient? I'm like, guess what? I work hard. I'm going to take the most inefficient bulbs and put them back into this house. So what did I do? <laughs> I went to all the local hardware stores. And bought all the incandescent bulbs I can have. I probably got an extra hundred bulbs in the closet right now. Might oh, look, that's amazing. Might, might look like a prepper, but I was like, I'm sorry. I know too much. Yeah. I don't want those LED frequencies or the fluorescent frequencies in my home. So now granted, I do have a ring light up here, but I'm wearing my blue blocking glasses and they only go on at night. 
And even during the day, I will put my boot blockers on again if I'm using this for video work because there is some, you know, it makes the skin look good, whatever. Yeah, um, no, I have mine on too. I have my, I have my red, my little red light. Do you want to see it? Yeah, yeah. Um, is it like a desk lamp with a red bulb in it or how do you do it? Um, I, I knew you had to have something on because the light, <laughs> the lighting didn't look normal, so. Yeah, so I have my ring light on so that there's decent quality. And then this. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, so that's from a company called EMR Tech. Yeah. You can get these, those nice little ones. Um, so it's not like a full red light panel where you can do your, you know, lay in front of it, you do your whole body. They do have those. Um, and the EMR Tech is uh, T-E-K? Yeah, T-E-K. You know, let's, made... let's, let's throw them a plug. Here, hold on. Screen yeah, share. Yeah, they're great. There you go. So oh, they, they talk about blue locking uh, glasses as well. So, oh, there yeah, you go. This is what started with it. Yeah, there it is. So that's a nice little guy. So you can, you know, put part of your body, you know, sit in front of it. Yeah. Um, you put it on a tripod it, or something like it, that. If your dog is still healing, you could put it, you know, you could put it on your pets as well. Yeah. Uh, but they also make like giant panels. They just made one for an NFL player. Um, one of the doctors I interviewed had it, bought one for his office. Yep. Um, his name's Dr. Mike Twyman. He's also fantastic. Um, Holy crap. It's probably this thing. The there fire you alarm. go. That's it. <laughs> Dear God, that thing. So is I, this, this NFL player, I think they build it for him and then they turned it into a thing. Like you can order it and he, you, you just like stand in front of it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have seen large standing panels, not on these guys, but yeah, I mean, obviously that's a lot of red light bulbs. I mean, oof. Well, it's 10 grand, so that, that looks fine. Okay. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's pause here. You don't need to take it to this level right away. Okay, so she, Meredith is dropping some good tips here. So you don't need to take it to that level unless you want no, to. you absolutely do not. Like just to get your to get your circadian rhythm. And this is what's so amazing is that it has such a profound, as Jack, what Dr. Jack Cruz would say, an asymmetric effect, right? Like these small changes. And you're like, and when you first hear it, you're kind of like, what? Okay my light bulbs, you know, and then you kind of think, oh, like if this was true, I would know someone would have told me I would have read about it somewhere. It would have been in a magazine. I would, I'm a, I know a lot about health. If this were true, I would know. And then you, you kind of forget about it. Right. And it might take a few repeat messages to come back to it, but it's, it's really like the great thing we're talking about mold and food and everything, which can be complex is not that hard to get your circadian biology in, in, right? Like the number one thing is when you wake up in the morning, go outside or <laughs> open a window, right? And try to wake up close to sunrise and have the first light that hits your eyeballs and hits your skin mm -hmm. be natural. And while you're at it, go outside and get some earthing in while you're at it, aka, yeah, so AKA grounded. Outside, yeah. yeah. If I go outside in the morning, 10 minutes, I stand on the ground, I do some jumping jacks because of getting your heart rate up. Mm -hmm. on a fast in the fasted state and all that go yeah you go outside in your bare feet if you can watch the sunrise and then throughout the day people used to take smoke breaks and, um, a light break take a light take a sun break right yeah. and you just go outside so your body can stay in rhythm and then change your light bulbs and if you want to watch tv we like i watch tv watch throw the, throw the glasses on you know, i throw the glasses on and that's it yeah. that's all it, no, it's so I, the I know the only investment is like some light bulbs and some blue blockers. It's, it's that's I it. like that because we're gonna have to buy bulbs anyway, right? Yeah, so okay, why not just mix it up a little bit? Why don't you try a couple of reds, you stick them in one little room or one little work lamp, and just start trying that out, you know? And just again, one thing I've learned over the years, whether it be health, fitness, anything else I've done, I've been in the fitness space, I've been everywhere, I've trained people in all facets, corporate life, you know fitness life. I've been around the block and um, not everybody can just jump all in me. I'm an all in kind of guy. I just jump all in. <laughs> not everybody's wired like me. I'm a little crazy. So you got to meet people where they're at. We said this earlier in the show. So sometimes baby steps, people, the smaller, the change, if the easier it is for you to make it way through, get used to it. And you move on to the next small change and the next small change. So maybe it's a red light bulb. Then maybe it's earthing later. Now then it's, it, then you build that consistency first. You get What's it? What's the age old uh, ages? And they say uh, 21 days builds a habit. Yeah. 30, 30 locks it in. Right. So it's okay. Once you get that first month out of the way, add something else into that routine. And it's funny because my, my wife drives me crazy because well, I drive her crazy uh, because one, the blue light blocking. Uh, two, she cannot stand the fact that I get up early in the morning. 
she wants to sleep in. And she's like, oh yeah, I know. I'm like, she's like, technically I'm already awake. I'm like, yeah, that's your circadian rhythm telling you to get up. And she's like, no, it's because you're loud. I'm like, no, I sneak out of the bed. Oh, she's like, I was like, so I don't understand why you even bother staying in bed. Cause you already made the joke that you're not sleeping well and you're already awake anyway. So you just lay there with your eyes closed while I get up and go do my thing. I'm like, okay, that's you, <laughs> but it's okay. I, I have to meet her where she's at. So yeah. what's the yeah. saying? Happy wife, happy life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so no phrase, but yeah. And that's the thing. And you know, I used to be like that. Like I got into this because, because of chronic fatigue and I would sleep for 10 hours and s- still feel exhausted and barely be able to get out of bed. Like I am not an athlete. I do not have a background as like be, you know, I've been into alternative health a lot, but like I was, you know, like I'm just, I, I'm not that person. And now I am. And it, it just, it's like, if you can get the light thing and you get your body kind of working on its, on the schedule, it's meant to work on things that used to be hard become easy. Oh yeah. It's, People it's, haven't it's amazing. seen you in a while. They're like, sorry, did you just say you went for a run? Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing once your body starts talking to you again. Yeah. But in, in positive uh reflection, where it's like all of a sudden you're like, wait, I'm, I'm a little bit more energized every single day. And then eventually it's like, oh wait, I'm more energized in the morning. And that's like, well, maybe, maybe, maybe I will add a workout in. And people are like, oh, I'm too tired. Fine. Okay. Maybe you're not ready for workouts right away. Maybe you need to build this foundation first to awaken that untapped energy that's always been there, but you haven't been able to produce it because everything else is broken. So we just have to fix these bridges and rebuild these connected pathways, right? Uh, synaptic pathways, right? Everything within your within your brain, within your nerves, everything. So I geek out about this stuff. So, Scott, um, that is a really beautiful way to put it, right? Because I think so many of us are like, oh, I should be doing this. I should be doing that. Oh my God. Oh my God. Right. And it's like, if we fix the things that are broken, those things that we feel bad we're not doing become doable, yeah. right? I, it took me a long time to be able to exercise, but like my first big win was that I could get through the day without having to lie down, right? Like that was a big win for me. There you go. And now- I And celebrate those wins. Yeah. 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 And it, it started, those changes really kicked in when I, I started taking my light seriously. And I just, two quick things I wanted to say, you, you reminded me when we were talking earlier about like the asbestos and cancer is that shift work is listed as a carcinogen, mm-hmm. right? It, no, this nobody looks it up. <laughs> yeah, no, this is documented science. It is now well known that people who do shift work for extended periods of time are at a much higher risk of cancer. Yeah. Look and, at our medical professionals. Yeah. Uh, I mean, whether you want to talk about during COVID or not, I mean, uh, I have we have a lot of friends in the health space, uh, nurses, doctors, and it's not just long hours. It's like, oh, you now you're working third shift. Oof, not good, not good at all. So our factory workers, the people who yeah. make all the things we take for granted in this world. Yeah, yeah. That's- Second and third shift is rough. Yeah, and I, I've done it in my life when I was younger. I've worked, I've worked every shift in, in the 24 hour period. I know what it's like. I don't need to do that anymore, <laughs> but we all start somewhere. And I probably didn't realize it because I was in my twenties. So what did I know? I was probably, I thought I was bulletproof back then. So. Yeah, totally. Uh, well, and the I'll other let- thing is if you're looking at your iPhone at midnight, you're basically a shift worker, right? Like, oh, there you go. Like why, what is happening? It's so important at midnight on your iPhone. Like unplug, dude. <laughs> Take a break. I love it, dude. I, now, my wife's an on-call doctor, so she can't always do that. But yeah. I go here on the iPhone, and I swipe down, and there's that picture of the airplane, and I just go, Boop, airplane mode. There you go. And then I go, put it on the charger, and I walk away. Yes. And it's and people are like, how do you do that? I, I was like, I don't know. Just do it. And I, I have a social media marketing business. Like, I have a marketing company. I, I help people grow social media like, <laughs> and people are like how do you unplug i'm like it's that easy <laughs> I was like, yeah, you just do it yeah just do it so uh again i go yeah. all in because again i spent i get on and i get off people are like i see you on there all the time you're always posting this I'm like because i have a chair i have my own charity I, I i'm promoting my book i'm like yeah 
I schedule my time. I get in and I get out. I don't, I don't even go into the news feed. That's a distraction. Like I get in there, I get my post done. I, I double check a couple of things. I run my data reports and I get out I'm done because I already do it for a living. Why do I want to live in there? And I unplug. Yeah. So it's something for people to consider. And yeah. Is that one of your top three? Like, uh, cause we definitely have, we have to bring the show to a close, but I know you had it on, you have three absolute essential elements to creating lasting health change. And I want to make sure that was one other point that we got in at, at the end of the show here today, because I love tips and tricks. So yeah. did we already hit on all those? And if, if so, do you want to sum them up? We kind of did, but, but number one, be outside as much as possible, right? Like playing outside with your dog or your kids or someone else's dog or whatever, playing outside, being outside is the number one biggest health hack. Like there's nothing, like there's nothing else. Oh, yeah. There's no, it is our, our lifestyle has become so antithetical to what is required for us to feel good. Mm-hmm. And we wonder why we feel like crap when we live in a way where it is impossible to feel good because we're not outside enough. Okay. So you got that one. What else? And then I would say blue blockers, unless yep. you want to just go straight to candles. As soon as the sun goes down, then you wouldn't need Ooh, that's a, you know, very romantic, <laughs> very romantic, yeah. right? Let's bring back the yeah. candle love, not the yeah. electric, not fire the, is not no the electric problem, candle people. It's, not, no, no, not, not the electric candles. No, that's not a candle. <laughs> no. Okay. Light it. I know it's a fire hazard. Just light it up. <laughs> yeah. Candles or a fire in the fireplace. Cause it's got the infrared in there. So it's not going to new house. I got two fireplaces. Nice. I got home last night at sunset. I wanted to be outside. I fired up my log splitter. I'm creating a massive firewood inventory because we have fire pits too. Like I will sit outside in a parka and just sit there and we'll just get all of that. Just fire pit, warm glow, healthy light. Oh, that's my thing. I don't yeah. fight wildfires anymore. Now I just set them <laughs> in, a, in a controlled contained way. So, yeah. um, Okay. Well, what's number three? So number three, I would say, I would say blue blockers because probably most people aren't going to go straight to candles after sunset. Okay. Right. But if you, if you can, you know, if a person can spend more time outside starting around sunrise and put on blue blockers after the sun goes down, okay. I would love to hear, I would love to hear the, the results of that in terms Especially of- Especially this time of year, party. right? Because the days have gotten yeah. shorter. Like the yeah. one sucky part about being on the East coast of the U S is that we still follow. And I grew up on a farm uh, so I can make fun of it. The whole time change thing. Oh like, so dude, weird. I'm sorry. As a, so as a Yeah. If you go back a hundred years ago, yes, farming probably needed that, but thanks to modern technology and not horse drawn equipment, they're getting stuff done. Yeah. Hell. <laughs> They even drive the combines at night, getting your inflammatory, <laughs> your inflammatory corn off at night with floodlights on these things. Like they don't need the time change. Get rid of it. The whole day to, uh, daylight savings time crap is archaic. Get rid of it. So that's just my little soapbox. Yeah, no. And it does, even that one hour can can mess up your, you know, your sleep cycle. It's annoying. Well, that, well I mean, it's fine because I, I adapt. I'm a huge outdoors yeah. nut. So I just I I just bought really nice uh uh uh, light lamp systems for my mountain bike so I can still go riding at night. So I just, I light up the trail on my floodlight and I'm ripping around, get my adrenaline junkie life on because again, I'm outside with or without daylight savings time. <laughs> well, this has been great. I love it. And actually um, one last thing I want to, I want to share with you and then I'll, uh, I'll ask you to hang tight real quick and we'll get you off. Uh, but Okay. My dog, 13 year old coon now. Uh, actually this Thanksgiving will be three years ago. We had to take one of his legs off to save him from cancer. He had localized cancer on his elbow, but this dog is older than him. He, he had a really rough week neurological last week. I had to put him on some uh, anti-inflammatories. All of a sudden he's back to his normal spastic self this week. So we're like, yay, we don't have to put you down, you know, because he was, he was pretty bad, but here's one thing, whether he's doing bad or not, that he wants to do every single day. What do you think that is? He wants to go outside. And where do you think he lays when he's outside? In the sun. And where does he prefer to be in the sun? On the concrete or in the yard? On the grass. Hmm. So my dog likes to go lay in the sun all day long 
in the grass or dirt or mulch, whatever yeah. you can get. Whatever. Uh, yeah. On Interesting. Yeah. Bang three three legged cancer surviving 13 plus year old <laughs> coon hound. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, you can follow him on Instagram at, at Calvin the Coon Hound. That's right. Because uh, that's what happens when you're a marketing guy. You create your own dog profile. Uh, <laughs> but, but seriously, there's some simplicity for you. And then in the evening, he's a high energy spastic nutball. <laughs> Why? Because he charged up all day long. Yes. Yeah. Yes. He just so. was pulling those electrons out of the earth. Feel it. Feel, filling himself up and people, people the just, light, yeah. they look at that. And I used to look at it as like, Oh, you're just a lazy dog and you got a good life. But it's like, no, let's think about oh, that. Yeah. Because the days like tomorrow, tomorrow he'll stay home with me. Cause I, yeah. I don't try, I don't travel on Mondays and Fridays, but during the week, if I'm not here, Kristen takes him in her medical SUV with him. So he hangs out in the back seat all day. He's got his own dog hammock and bed and everything else. So he's trust me, he's fine. But Unless the windows are down, he's not getting his sun. And I noticed those evenings, he's more tired and more lackadaisical. Mm. But on the Mondays and Fridays or the weekends, when he's been outside charging up, he's hopping around like a three-legged freak, howling and doing his thing. And I'm like, hmm, high energy on days that he's been laying outside. I don't know. Just throwing that out there. So I figured you would appreciate that. So. I totally, that's, yeah, that is exactly it, right? If we, if we spent half the day lying on the ground in the sun, we would be completely different humans. Our brains would work better. I mean, it would just be amazing. Why do you think people go to Mexico or go to these amazing warm countries to come back with these amazing tans and they feel great. And then they get, they fall into depression within two to three weeks because they missed that vacation. Yeah. And people think, oh, it's because I'm on vacation. I don't know if the stress of work, but it's, it's Maybe. the right. It's the light. Yeah. It, yeah. And that does bring up a, a, a good, I think something that's important to hit on is that you do not get the benefits of the sunlight through a window. Thank you. The glass, the glass is a filter. The glass blocks out all the stuff you need. You'd have to, and even cracking a window, even a little bit, because the photons from the sun are not linear, they bounce all over. Mm-hmm. That makes a huge difference. So if it's really cold, you don't want the window wide open, even having it cracked is better than not. Another great tip. See, you know, normally, and again, you can still add to that uh, because I always have, I have my guest co host at the end of the show bring us to a close anyway and leave behind an all encompassing message or it could be a legacy message for you, whatever. It's your thing. You're the co host for today. So, uh, on that note, is that how you want to bring the show towards a close? Just uh, some last minute tips like that? Or do you have something bigger that you want to kind of leave behind to inspire people with and, uh, you know, remind people to go to quantumhelp.tv? I got that covered. That'll all be in the show notes. But, um, yeah. Is there anything big, big picture you want to leave behind for everybody? You know, Scott, there is. And uh, I'm going to go back to when I, when I asked the doctors when this type of information would make it into med school. And they said, if, if it ever does, it'll be another 15, 20 years. Oof. And what I've realized through my research is there's something called the translational gap. When new information or a new discovery is validated and real, but there's, there's a lag between when it has been discovered, like say penicillin, and when it's something that's actively prescribed through the medical system. And we're in that gap right now with this type of information. And that gap is being filled with things like this podcast. And listening to this podcast and having mentors like you and being people who are willing to take a risk and do their own research we're shifting the paradigm and closing that gap faster if it would, and maybe it wouldn't even ever get closed. So I just want to say that what you do and the people who listen to this podcast, it really matters. Thank you. I think that's a good message. I mean, I, I never planned on having a podcast years ago. I was just a consumer. And then you realize like, you know what I could do this. And I, I tell people all the time, yes, I want to bring the messaging out to other people and share your message, but it's actually a little bit of selfishness for me. So, it's yeah. like, I, I love absorbing new knowledge and being able to, again, create these new paradigms and this shift and figure out what's going to matter to be next, right? Maybe there is something cutting edge, or in this case, like you're saying, 
maybe we're just trying to just reshare information that again, I had Jack on back in 2017. I had Kevin Cottrell back on. So I had these guys on in the, in the past five years. So it's like, okay, we're hitting on this content again. It's now 2021. We're hitting on it again and again and again, just with new influencers like you to help re kickstart and maybe tighten this and close the gap a little bit faster. I love that. That's a great way to yeah. close this out. So, Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, like there was a, there was a Nobel prize given in 2017 for circadian rhythm, right? Mm -hmm. We're not, we're, we're not making this stuff this isn't up. That woo -woo. It's not that hundreds woo -woo. of yeah. I could send hundreds of links to public research, yeah. public yeah. research, right? Like I'm not saying we're creating a new thing. We are providing a channel for people to find what they need to feel Love better. It. I just want everyone to feel better. <laughs> I, I totally agree, especially if these are natural things that can we do that, again, well, those those red light toys aside, uh, that are actually affordable, approachable, and can be naturally solved in Mother Nature, in our natural environments. That's I was back to full circle earlier in, in the show you mentioned. It's like changing your environment to a healthier environment to take advantage of these free steps that we could take advantage of that are already around us. We have just forgotten them. And moved away yeah. from them. Yes. Yeah. You don't actually don't. Okay. Maybe you have to buy a pair of blue blocking glasses with all the technology today. Okay. Spend a little bit of money on that. <laughs> yeah. But everything else it's like, okay, well go outside yeah. more. It's free. Take, take your rubber shoes off and go stand on the grass a little yeah. while. You know, you don't have grass, go to a public park. I don't know. Just it's not the end of the world. You can figure this out. People you can figure it out. So listen, hang tight. Why don't we give you a proper goodbye off the air? Ladies and gentlemen, I want to share one last time for the video watchers too, by the way. So again, quantumhealth.tv is a pretty cool channel because I started geeking out over the past couple of weeks. I haven't even gone through all of her content yet because there's so much on here. Uh, and actually, there's already a couple of people I've seen on here that I've heard about that I haven't even had a chance to chat with yet. Uh, so maybe Meredith and I can follow up later about that because some of these people look fun and I know I'm going to geek out with them. So ladies and gentlemen, this is the site there's a lot of information on here. Again, even if you go through her whole site, go track down Dr. Dr. Jack Cruz's site. Because again, yep. that man, you are not going to run out of content in his site. <laughs> yeah, no. It is like never ending. So yeah. again, ladies and gentlemen. Ours is kindergarten. His is PhD. <laughs> but that is, again, you, you created a new wealth of accessible knowledge to help reduce the woo-woo factor and help us start understanding this stuff sooner rather than later. So I, I thank you for that, and I appreciate you for that. Hang tight. I'll give you a proper goodbye off the air. Ladies and gentlemen, again, Meredith Oak of quantumhealth.tv. You can also get there by going to circadianlife.tv as well. So thanks for tuning in. Remember, you too can live the fuel. And we'll talk to you guys again soon.